We are almost up to our knees in snow. This is Monday, the 22nd of February, right guys? Right. right. Well, we had planned this trip last week because we thought Monday, according to the Weather Channel, which by the way, I'm a little disappointed in their long range predictions, this started out to be an inch of snow, they said for today. This is Trooper Dave Emerson, off duty, who's gonna help us catch some pike. Right at the lake that Gary Botek says is loaded with small pike. I'm on the hook again. Okay, on the hook, and we were <laughs> supposed to do a, a tip-up story. Now, I don't know exactly how we're going to do it, but doggone it, we made the plans, and we're going to finish the job, so stick with us. I'm Fred Trost. I think it's almost time for the impractical <laughs> sportsman. Well, out there battling the blizzard, I mean, actually, is Doug and Matt. These are our product boys here who have... Uh, familiar with a variety of tip-ups. Matt has actually uh, invented something to go with a tip-up that we're going to show you. But Gary Botek, this is the lake that you guided us to. We won't reveal the name of it. It's a private little lake up here. You, right. You know somebody who, I mean, it does look like a small lake. It's not very big at all. And it's shallow with weeds? There's a lot of weeds, especially around the edge. Uh. Now, we're going to be going, what we're trying to do is a story on different kinds of tip-ups. And we may have to cut back to the studio for this. We don't know because of these conditions. I mean, we are really battling what we expected to be an inch of snow and stop. We'll catch some pike. I just can't tell you how, how fast and hard <laughs> they'll be hitting, but I'm not going to get skunked. Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six of us so we can put out 12 tip-ups. Right. So and that should give us a good chance. At least, at least we'll get to see how this variety of tip-ups works. Right. So this lake, though, you've been on it before when? I fished it a couple times in the winter and the summer and we've never walked out of here skunk yet. Oh, no. And I wish you wouldn't have said it. No, That's no, okay. no, I'm no. Really confident. See, that is the worst thing. You don't know how many people have said that, Gary. That's, that's that other people, the, that's that not was, me. That was the worst <laughs> omen. No, I'm not worried, we'll catch okay. something. We'll catch some pike and we'll show how these tip-ups work. So uh, we're probably already bored through the ice by now and we probably have the tip-ups set if my schedule is right, and we've covered up most of what we talked about with B-roll. That's okay. what we call it in the TV business. So, let's catch some pike. We should have driven out here. Yeah, right. How deep is this? How thick is that ice? How long's the, the drill part? Lots of ice. Man, that's uh, 14, 16, 18 inches of ice? I'd say so. You got a scooper? But this is maybe a more practical way to yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It sounds good. It's the cheap way to go. It's not necessarily the most practical. They do a good job, you know. They, they cut really nice, but boy. Well, here, show us another there's one. There's a lot of ice. <laughs> show uh, us another one. Uh, I think it's one. your turn, Fred. You know, Fred. I noticed with a four-inch hole that you, you only cut, like, half as much ice. And it goes faster. Well, this is a little different type of a tip-up with a conventional fishing reel on it. Remember these, uh, these folks... That was, uh, of course, you can tell that was from times past. Uh, up at Tip Up Town, they gave me this. And Doug Tabor, go ahead and... Instead of feeding the line out, you just push a button and you let the line out. Okay, because that's a spin and cast reel now. Spin cast reel. Reeled up a little bit so we know where bottom is here. Yeah, well, bottom is there. Don't we want to reel this? Oh, we're not talking... Holy that's cow. We're, deep. No, we're talking three, uh, four feet of water at the most. At the most. So well, I, think, I think we should be fishing probably... A foot or so under the oh, ice. Oh, I think a little farther down here. No, I don't. Okay. I disagree. I'm going with Fred. Well, well, because we got 12 tub ups to set up, and we can argue about how deep it should be set. Okay. <laughs> no, now, I, how do you hook your? I, I hook mine through the back, through just in front of the dorsal fin. I approve. Okay. Good. Good. <laughs> that, that's what good. I do. And I stick the middle in the water. Nice and lively one. Yeah. And give them a little bit more line here. Now the thing is, whoops, we just had this reel. That must have an anti-reverse. The reel's got an anti-reverse on it, one of the... There, okay. One, oh no, we want the anti-reverse on, Fred. You want it? When the fish takes line, I'll, sh I'll just show you here real quick. You can tell whether the pike is taking line or oh, not from okay. the top. Oh, okay, okay. And then you can just grab your hand on it there. Okay, I see, I see, you. excuse me. I think we need to give it a little more than oh. a foot though, Fred, no. to get it below the ice, there's a yeah, foot but of ice. Yeah, but, okay, you're okay. right there. Where does this hook? This hooks, bring that line right there like that. And that hooks right on there, very much like the conventional tip-ups. 
Yeah, I see you're doing real good there, Doug. Maybe it goes this way. Maybe it does go that way. There we go. There we go. Now, so what'll happen is fish takes line. No, no, no. You're bringing just. Am I bringing it up? Yeah. Okay, fish takes line that way because I can't see which way it's going. He'll he'll pull it. See, he'll pull that line. When he pulls, when the fish pulls, it'll pull it that way. Oh. Over towards the side. Okay, so that's why I can't trip it by just moving the line. Right. Okay, it takes a pull from a fish. Now we got this one figured out. Now we've used, we're, we're trying a lot of tip-ups we've never I used I've never used this before, uh, Okay. Just just uh, seeing the demonstration of it done before. I, I like the looks of it. It covers up your hole. Well, You're not gonna have to worry about this hole freezing up. See, that's the other thing that's, that's handy about this. That keeps the hole covered so it won't freeze up. But the reel is on top, so it's possible, I suppose, if it was sleeting, it could freeze, but yeah. we'll let that one go. We got a lot of work ahead of us here. A lot of work. We got, let's go over to, to Matt. Matt has a great, great invention. Matt Radzalowski. Matt, you came by our museum a couple weeks ago with this invention. He says, I just want to show it to you, Fred. It's something uh, electronic. Yeah, uh, this was something I designed a few years back. Uh, basically what it is, it's just a tip-up alarm. I got tired of constantly being in a shanty, peeping out, trying to see if your tip-up was set. Uh, also, it's a good idea if you're fishing maybe like on a day like today, yeah. downwind and your tip-up's maybe upwind from you, you're constantly looking upwind for them, you got the Getting snow the ice. in your face. Oh, right in your face, yeah. So, so this was just a little something I developed just to kind of cut down those problems for you. Okay, well let's let's show how it works. It has a, obviously a, a, some components here, electronic components with a switch. Um, it has a little leader here, which you drill the hole through the tip-up flag. Yeah, we okay. changed that around on, on the new design for you with the plans you got. Okay, so. but we're going to trip this as a fish would trip this. If it moves the line, there we go. You don't get the full swing of the flag, but you got the noise, you got the red light. And you're all set. Then all you do is just turn off the switch. You can leave it all connected, throw it mm -hmm. down on the ice, and then play your fish from there. Play your fish in. Now, this is just components that you got where? Uh, from Radio Shack. The whole thing will cost you without batteries right around $10. 10 bucks. Okay. We are going to put that in the April-May issue of the Practical Sportsman because I think this is a practical idea. In fact, show, get that polar tip up there. You also designed this or adapted this to a polar tip up, which is a uh, polar... Whoa! <laughs> there we go already. Us, we, yeah. got our, we got our fish moving. A polar tip up is a real popular <clears throat> type of tip up that uh, works on a little different principle when the fish he actually rotates with the put the line through this hole right here which I guess I could do yeah. I'll never do it on camera it always oh it worked okay the line goes through the hole what? whoa still kind of fun okay so now what we have is the pike on the bottom and and this is set above the ice and we're gonna trip that Oh, flag up. Now we know with the polar tip up. And you can watch the fish as the fish pulls the line. That's kind of the exciting part about the polar. Watch it run out and it really starts zipping. Gets your heart pumping. Well, anyway, Matt, let's go set these tip ups up, these electronic ones. Okay. It'd be kind of fun. Instead of a tip up, have a, a beep off, a that beep off good. fishing. Oh man, this is all for nothing, isn't it? It looks that way, boys. Oh, f me. All the way to the Watch end the of the bay. Oh. oh, nothing there. Well, took the middle and everything. What'd you say, Dave? Gosh darn it. Gosh darn it. <laughs> <laughs> the darn, 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 darn. <laughs> Took that darn middle. You know, I just gave the prediction to Mark that this is going to be the first show I've done in a long time when we didn't catch any fish. No, 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 <laughs> no. I ain't going to get skunked. Oh, there's no fish on here. Oh. Well, he cleaned it. There's nothing. He cleaned it right off. Well. Is he on? We don't know yet, John. I don't know. It doesn't look up. good. Oh, no, gone at all. Nope, nothing there. How many more of these we got to go Look through? Look at that. Cleaned off again. This weather has not let up. I mean, this has been snowing all day long like this. <laughs> the question is that a lot of people are going to have is, how can this possibly be fun? You see, the lake is not loaded with people. I mean, I suppose anybody with any brains would not go fishing today because they'd realize it. It's freeze up. to death. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but we're not freezing to death. 
I mean, because we do have mittens on. I mean, we're long underwear. Look at all the layers that Matt has. You can see him right there. A red shirt, a, a sweatshirt. And I can see about three, <laughs> four zippers lined oh, yeah. up. And look at Doug. Isn't he cute? Here comes Frosty. <laughs> look at this. Here comes Frosty. Our little snow bunny. Our snow bunny. Show him your boots, Doug. Look at those. You can't, you can't see him. <laughs> but I mean, these are things, these are all practical things that are made for weather like this. And as long as you're warm and dry, what the hay? Who cares if we catch any fish, right, Gary? Uh, let off. <laughs> hey, we're getting some fish out there. They're just a small, yeah, we're catching, smaller than Oh, these yeah. Pipes. We're catching panfish. Yeah, we're nice. watching the tip ups, and you guys are out there catching these things like about that long, right? Huh? Well, yeah. 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 John, you were out there. You're the cameraman. You can't lie. Yeah, in fact, that's, that is as big as most of what I saw you guys catch. That is what we've been catching. <laughs> that right is. That's that's a little big. bigger than that. <laughs> Not much. Day. Not much. I got one. How's, I got one what's that? There, there's right here. We have a, look at this. This is nine inches. <laughs> I, think I, got one, uh -huh. I think I got one bigger than that. Right, put a nine inch uh, shiner down there. Well, I tell you. This is what it's all about, male bonding, yeah. camaraderie. Well, actually, it's huh? 20 after 4, and Gary says they usually start out here about 25 after 4. Well, I tell you what, not Northern Pike. Northern Pike hit during the day. You could have fooled me. We're going to get skunked. <laughs> We're going to get skunked. Shut up. <laughs> we are. Fred, then I'm going to believe that the rumor that you are a jinx, because I have never gotten skunked on this But lake. have you had fun? Oh, I've had a good time. I've had a good time. Oh, what did you, what do we have for lunch? What did you have sandwiches. for lunch today? Uh, some sandwiches. Sandwich? Sandwich. Sandwich. <laughs> sandwich. Come on, sandwich it. <laughs> Help. There we go. Sandwich. Wait, we're breaking the tub up. See, this is how you have fun ice fishing. That's on, fun. Gary. I call that getting cold. <laughs> they had a flag. I tell you, we're, we had the tip ups about a half a mile apart. So over my shoulder, I think they already pulled the pike. But we'll find out. Come on, well, go ahead and pull it oh, up. That's all right, get over here, Frank. No, pull it up, you pull it up. You guys. John. Holy! And I told you, you there were bass. I told you there were bass in this. You got to be smokes. kidding me. Isn't that big? Look at oh this, turn it gosh. around. Look at the mouth Holy on that cow. thing, John. We'll get your a, a tape here. We can... Holy moly. Tony, remember I was just telling you? Yep. I was telling him that my son caught one up here. It was five pounds, eight ounces. Oh my goodness. No kidding. Let's big get this baby John? measured. Only mouth is that. Of course, now put the put the mouth up. We gotta get the right right to the tip 19 of the tail. 19 and a half, close 20. That's Almost. A, well, 20 inch here, close. I tell you, if we half. worked on it, it could be 20 inches. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you measure it over the back. No, it's 19 and a half. See, here it's got the little mineral spots on here, it. Here, hold it up like for the trophy book. Yeah. Push it out, yeah. Well. We've been pike fishing all day. We've got crappie, perch, bluegill, pumpkin seeds, and one bass. But that's horrendous. We just we opened up the shanty and heard the alarm going off. And Did you? We couldn't hear anything <clears throat> from up there. That's five pound bass, John. Uh, close, close, close. Yeah, close. Look at that. Yeah. They take the hook out. You want me to so it stays you got in it? Yeah. yeah, I got it. Get that. We were now just talking one, about bass. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's out of season though. Largemouth bass out of season, but boy, that's a big yeah. Boy, I tell you, to catch one like that in the summer. There he goes. He's gone. <laughs> boy, he thought he had a meal. It was probably the, <laughs> the first minnow he's decided to eat in a week. This went off once while you guys were out there, and the minnow was gone, so we reset it and just peeked out the shanty window there, and flag hmm. was up and alarm was gone. So. Hey, that's a great tape. I only have one That's thing a, to say. We didn't get jinxed. Now hold it. We did. Hold oh. it. We were pike fishing. <laughs> we were pike fishing. Pike hey. fishing. That's a fish and it was big. We it was on a tip up. It was on a tip up. And it was on one of Matt's tip ups too. Yep. Well, that's where we got the. No. Yeah, that's yeah this is the bath where we got the bath yeah. before. Is it moving it? I'm click so that off. Did it take much line? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. I got this. Nothing again. You got something? Yep, there's something. That's something. Here we oh, go. There you go. Please be a pike. Please be a pike. Please be a pike. Oh, oh look at ah. it. yes! 
Yes! Yes! You did it! Yes! Yes! <laughs> <right>. Yes! <laughs> you delivered! I told you, buddy! Not I donkey. told you! And that's a, that's a keeper. Later at night, what'd we tell him? That's a keeper. That's a nice pike. Yeah, hold it, kind of turn it, yeah, like that. That is, that is a Same decent tip for up a, there. Got your measuring yeah. tape? Yes. Just for kicks? That was on, uh, let's show Same that Same tip, tip up, up there that we got the bass off of. Yeah. The one with the beep. That was the one with the, the beep. Could you hear the beeper? Yeah. yeah. Open his mouth. Just take it. Keeper. That's a, oh. 23, 24. That, that would be a keeper under the new under regulations. New. Yeah, but on. that is a definite keeper. You got him good? Yeah, I got him. Who yeah, likes pike? I'm Who wants to eat pike? I do. Don't throw them away. We finally did it. Caught a northern pike that we were after. Now, I have to admit, I was kind of hoping we would get skunked today because, you know, we had so much fun, believe it or not, that catching fish with this bunch of guys was a real bonus. But we did see Matt Razalowski's tip-up in action, and it caught both of our tip-up fish, and both fish were above average in size. Gary Botek delivered on pike. It was only one, but it was the cherry on the cake. Where's the minnows at, Dave? Right close? Oh, that was cool. Oh, boy. Nice one, Freddy. Yep, that Matt got this one. I got that one. Who hold it up, Matt or which one? I got it. You got yeah. it. Yeah. Looks like a northern pike. It does. 20, 20, doesn't it? Almost 25 inches. Well, I tell you, we run from one end of this lake to the other. <laughs> oh, now, man. if you take this in, him. in in what Did you I would call five yeah. of us, same type of five of us running 500 yards that way and 500 yards back, that's a thousand yards. Let's get him. That's a mile. Someone that's one person we'll running a mile. Just put him in the for soil. nothing for one pike. And yeah, then we come back here right next to the shanty and we got... Well, we got one pike for the day. Eight times we pulled nothing but empty hooks. Hundreds of thousands of snowflakes peppered our well-insulated bodies, but we had fun. And you know, that's really what it's all about. <laughs> Now, hold on. i got to qualify that. See, if you go out and catch a lot of fish, but you're fishing with a bunch of people or guys that you think are jerks, no fun. But you can go out and catch nothing, and if you're in good company, hey, that's what it's really all about, and that's the kind of day we had. We were showing different tip-ups. Of course, Matt's tip-up it will be in the next issue of our magazine. Uh, there's other tip-ups we didn't get to. Here's one that Bernie Hines invented. Here's a box tip-up here. Look at this one. This one, you put the, the spool inside a box so the snow doesn't get to it. Put it over on the top. Here's an ingenious one that I can't wait to try out. This one sits down in the hole like that and stays underneath and is hooked with a, a little clip there so it flips up. We didn't get a chance to try that one. And here's one that would only be good on clear ice. This is a tip up that inside here, when the fish runs and it trips the flag, it goes out to the side. But you can't have the kind of snow that we had. By the way, where were we fishing? Somewhere around in this area. I'd like to tell you more, but we got to get on to the recipe. This soup is cream of partridge soup. And uh, unfortunately, partridge is out of season. Yeah. And Denise Kashmir's husband didn't come up with any for the freezer. Is yeah, that right, Bill? Sure. That's right. So what do you do with the wild game recipe, Denise, when you don't have the wild game? Well, I'll tell you. I substituted chicken breast. Mm -hmm. And really, this could go with a goose, with duck, any fowl. So, but I had to use chicken. Now, have you tried it this way before, Bill? I believe we only had it with partridge. You've only had it? Okay, yeah. well, try yeah. this then. I want to find out what he thinks of the comparison of partridge. So just dig right in there. Mmm. I tell you, the broth, the broth is a winner. These are not, these, this looks like um, carrots, but it's not. No, it's sweet potatoes. In fact, if we look at the ingredients over here, you put what, soy sauce in here? Well, there's soy sauce in with the um, chicken breast because I boil those first. Hmm. Lemon pepper, parsley flakes. You use some cream of chicken soup, and you even do that if you have partridge. Right. Or grouse. And yams, yep. that that many? Yep. In this can? Yep. Cut them up in small pieces and, mm. and use the liquid. That's what makes the um, sweet taste in here. And then, of course, there are some other ingredients in here, some half and half and and things like that. Right. 
but I'll tell you. Well, what do you think, Bill? Uh, it tastes pretty good. Is it? How does it compare with with uh, grouse? You have. I like ways. both. You like oh, both? Yeah, oh yeah. I like any kind of fowl. Turkey's mm. my favorite. So you could use turkey in this. Right. Right, could use a turkey breast in here. It'd be great at uh, Thanksgiving time with leftover mm -hmm. turkey, if there's any turkey left over. But this broth <laughs> is particularly good. Mm -hmm. Very what makes sweet. It, what makes it so good? I think it's the half and half and the uh, liquid from the yams. Hmm. Because the yams are sweetened, and mm -hmm. so it makes a sweet yam, and that's why I put uh, sweet peas in there. Now, would you only do this with with fowl, you know, like, like with chicken or with uh, grouse or... Well, I mean, usually a cream soup is usually with, with uh, a you, fowl. You wouldn't do it with any red meat, any venison or... I haven't tried it that way, but I've mm. got a, I got some in the freezer. I could always try that. Mm. <laughs> well, I think that this is darn good. And I think, Bill, that your job from now on is to get more partridge. <laughs> if you can I find got some them. ducks. <laughs> got some we got some venison. <laughs> no okay. partridge this year. This is terrific, though. A terrific way to make cream of chicken or cream of partridge soup. Mm. Here's Denise's recipe right here in the current issue of our Practical Sportsman magazine. But if you can, get outdoors this weekend too. It's a great place to be. See you next week.